What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to another casually competitive MTG gameplay video where it's our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast paced and entertaining. Today we have a very special treat, we invited some of the guys from play to win to our stream, decided to record some games and got some great footage from them, so this game and the next few games will be taken from that stream. If you don't know who play to win is, they make really good and really entertaining CEDH content, so if you're looking for more content, please be sure to check them out. Another little note here is we did play quite a few games and some of them were quick, so instead of doing a double header with a bunch of different commanders, what we decided to do is just split them up and release multiple gameplay videos a week with some shorter videos rather than one longer one with multiple games with different commanders. We thought it'd be less confusing this way and you get the same amount of gameplay content, it's just split up. Since this is going to be a shorter episode, let's quickly, very quickly, go over the promotions. We have a Patreon available. Thank you so much to all of our supporters. We really do appreciate it. And if you do want to help support us, link is in the description. We also have a merch store with some fantastic merch items, a Kickstarter that's helping fund our first playmat release, a TCG affiliate link in the description, a Twitch channel that we stream all of this on, and a public Discord link in the description. That being said, promotions out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first is Nate playing one of my favorite decks, Rukthar the Unbowed. The plan of this deck is really straightforward, smack and stacks, that's really all there is to it. Play Rurikthar as early as possible, throw down some great stacks pieces like Possibility Storm and Thorn of Amethyst, and eventually win through either combat damage or through something like a Kikijiki line. Nate's opening hand contained a Forest, a Cinderglade, a Mask of Memory, a Priest of Titania, a Kikijiki Mirror Breaker, an Orin Frostfang, and due to the London Mulligan, he put a Splinter Twin to the bottom of his library. Going second is Joseph playing Holland or Chulain, Teller of Tales, depending on how you want to pronounce it. This deck looks to utilize its commander's ability to get massive value off of mana dorks and other cheap creatures in order to draw into some type of combo like a Shrieking Drake and a Mana Breach, or a Shrieking Drake and an Earthcraft, or a similar bounce creature and an Aluren, really just anything to infinitely cast creatures to draw the library and then win through a finale of Devastation. Joseph's opening hand contained a Plains, a City of Brass, a Nature's Claim, a Bloom Tender, a Trophy Mage, a Yeeson the Wanderer Bard, and an Allurant. Going third in this game is one of our guests, Cameron, and he was playing Chain Veil to Fairy. The goal of this deck is to assemble a combo with the Chain Veil, as well as enough permanence that can be untapped for enough mana to reactivate the Chain Veil using Teferi's negative ability. With the way that the Chain Veil works with Teferi, as long as you can untap the Chain Veil and three permanents that produce at least five mana, you'll have all the pieces you need in order to infinitely activate Teferi, making as much mana as you need and essentially drawing your library. Cameron's opening hand contained three islands, an ever-flowing chalice, a pact of negation, a mana vault, and a pulse of the grid. And finally, last but not least, we have our other guest, Dylan, again from Play to Win, and he brought his Braylon and Shabra's Curiosity combo deck. The aim of this Braylon deck is to play Braylon, put a Curiosity effect on her, and then go to your end step with 8 cards in hand, and then discard to hand size, deal a damage due to Braylon's ability, draw a card off a of Curiosity, and loop this enough times to finish off your opponents. Dylan's deck also has a discard outlet in the form of Tireless Tribe, as well as some Underworld Breach Lines ID diamond combo lines in it. Dylan's opening hand contained a steam vents, a snow covered island, a mana crypt, a brainstorm, a careful study, a fluster storm, and a glint horn buccaneer. Now with the opening hands and deck introductions out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Nate starts off this game by drawing, playing a forest as his land for turn, and then tapping that forest to cast a boreal druid. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph draws, plays a City of Brass, and then gives the turn to Cam. Cam draws, plays an Island, and then taps that Island to cast a Mana Vault. Mana Vault resolves, and Cam passes the turn to Dylan. Dylan draws, plays a Snow-Covered Island as his land for turn, and then for zero mana, casts a Mana Crypt. With nothing left, he ships the turn over to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, plays a tapped Cinderglade as his land for turn, and then taps for 2 mana to cast a Fertile Ground targeting his forest. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Joseph, and on Nate's end step, Joseph taps his City of Brass taking 1 damage to cast a Nature's Claim targeting Cam's Mana Vault. The Nature's Claim resolves, Cam gains 4 life, and then Joseph goes to his turn, 
untaps, draws, plays a forest as his land for turn, and then taps for two mana, taking one damage from his City of Brass to cast a Bloom Tender. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Cam. Cam untaps, draws, plays an island, and then taps for two mana to cast an ever-flowing chalice, kicking it one time. With the chalice on the board, he gives the turn to Dylan. Dylan untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then shocks in a steam vents as his land for turn, taking two life, and then taps his mana to cast one of his partner commanders, Braylon Skyshark Rider. With Braylon on the board, he decides to give the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, plays a strip mine as his land for turn, and then taps for two mana to cast a Mask of Memory. Once this mask is on the battlefield, he pays one mana to equip it to his Boreal Druid, and he then goes to combat and swings his newly equipped Boreal Druid at Cam, who declares no blockers, takes one damage, and Nate then draws two cards from the mask trigger and discards an Orin Frostfang. He then for one green mana casts a Fintorn Elves. With nothing left, Nate gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, plays a Plains as his land for turn, and then taps out completely, taking one damage from his lands to cast Alluren. Priorities pass around, Alluren surprisingly resolves, and now with this insane value and combo piece on the board, Joseph passes the turn to Cam. Cam untaps, draws, plays an Island as his land for turn, and then taps that Island to cast a Preordain. He scries both cards to the top, draws a card, and deciding to leave up mana, gives the turn to Dylan. On Cam's end step, for zero mana, Dylan flashes out a Glinthorn Buccaneer due to the Alluren that Joseph has on the battlefield. The Buccaneer resolves, and Dylan then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, wins his mana Crypt Trigger, not taking any damage. He then taps for one blue mana to cast a Careful Study. When it resolves, he draws two cards and then discards two cards, dealing a total of four damage to each opponent from the discards due to the Glinthorn Buccaneer and his commander. And then his commander gets two counters from discarding two cards. He then, as his land for turn, shocks in a Hollowed Fountain paying two life, and then for one blue mana, casts a Brainstorm. He draws three cards, puts any two cards from his hand back on top, and then with the stack clear, taps for three mana to cast a Wheel of Fortune. In response to the Wheel of Fortune, Nate for zero mana flashes out a Priest of Titania. In response to the Priest cast, Joseph for zero mana flashes out a Yeeson the Wanderer Bard. In response to the Yeeson cast, Cam, for 2 mana, having to actually pay for his spells, casts a delay targeting the Yeeson. There are no responses to delay, and Yeeson is successfully suspended for 3 turns. The Priest of Titania then resolves, and the Wheel of Fortune then resolves. Dylan has 3 cards in hand, so he discards 3 cards, dealing 6 damage to each of his opponents, and putting 3 more counters on Braylon. Everyone else also discards their hand, and notable discards here is Nate, who discarded both Kiki Jiki and Natural Order, and Cam, who discarded a Cursed Totem. Everyone then draws 7 cards, and Dylan decides to go to combat. In response to going to combat, Joseph, for 0 mana, flashes out a Lavinia Azorius Renegade. It resolves, Dylan proceeds to combat, and he then swings his 8-8 commander and his 2-4 Glinthorn Buccaneer at Cam. Cam declares no blockers, takes 10 damage, and then Dylan passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, plays a forest as his land for turn, and then taps for 6 mana to cast his commander, Rickthar the Unbowed. In response to Rickthar, Joseph pays 2 life to cast a Noxious Revival, targeting the finale of Devastation that he just discarded off of the wheel. Noxious Revival resolves, Joseph puts finale back on top of his library, and Rickthar then resolves. Nate decides to go to combat next and swings his Boreal Druid at Dylan, who declares no blockers, takes one damage, and Nate then draws two cards off of the Mask of Memory trigger and then discards a mountain. He then goes to his end step and discards another land due to hand size. Joseph then goes to his turn and in his upkeep removes a suspend counter from Yison and then draws his card for turn. He then plays an island as his land for turn and taps for one mana to cast a Soul Ring. On cast, he takes 6 damage from Ruik Thar, and in response to the Soul Ring, Nate activates his Strip Mine to destroy Joseph's City of Brass. 
in response to the strip mine activation, Joseph takes one damage from City of Brass to float a white mana. The City of Brass is then destroyed, and Soul Ring then resolves. Joseph then taps his Bloom Tender for three colored mana and his Soul Ring for two colorless to attempt to cast his commander, Hullen Teller of Tales. There are no responses to Hullen, and Joseph, for zero mana, flashes out a white main lion. On cast, Joseph draws a card and shocks in a temple garden from the Hullen trigger, and then priorities pass around for white main lion. Nobody has any responses, it enters the battlefield and Joseph decides to have it bounce itself, and now he has a loop on his hands. With Allure on the battlefield, Joseph is able to continually flash out for free White Main Line, drawing a card each time and putting a land onto the battlefield. With most of his library drawn, he's able to play all of his mana dorks again for free, and then with his available lands, he can cast an overloaded Cyclonic Rift to bounce everyone's board, and then play a giant finale of Devastation, overrunning the board and winning the game through combat damage. Now this game was a little bit on the shorter side, and the reason we're releasing this by itself again like I said before, is due to the fact that we played a lot of different commanders in this stream and in all the streams that we're using for footage, so rather than shoving a bunch of different pods into one video, we're releasing multiple gameplay videos per week and organizing it a little bit differently, so you will still be getting the same amount of content over the course of a week, it's just over two days instead of one video. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about this game because I personally thought it was a really cool game. Mainly because I've never seen Aluren actually work. Every time I see that card cast, it's either countered because it's just too strong, or it just gives someone else way too much value and ends up backfiring a little bit. In general, it was very close to backfiring in this game, and as the Holland player, I did decide to just shove it out because I had the Yisan in hand, and I was really hoping I could ramp fast enough to play both Holland and activate Yisan for Shrieking Drake before anyone else could get too much value off of it, but it was still an incredibly risky play. With Nate having an immense amount of mana dorks in his library and winning technically off of creature-based wins, and with there being a lot of high-value creature targets in the Shabraz and Braylon deck that Dylan was playing, there was a chance that the Alluren play would have backfired pretty heavily. Especially since with the cards that I had in hand, by the time the turn got back around to me with Yisan, even if I got Yisan resolved, I would have only been able to either activate him or cast Hullen, so I would have needed at least one more turn depending on what I drawed, so it was a very risky play for sure, but it did end up paying off. This play specifically really shows how important it is to be aware of everything that's going on in the table, being aware of both board state, cards in hand, and play turn order was very important here. With the mono blue player going directly after me, I felt fairly safe knowing that if either Dylan or Nate tried winning off of my Aluren, that he might have a way to stop them, and before it gets back to my turn, I can just do something on Nate's end step. So if he really held a counter up for that long, it pretty much meant that Dylan and Nate really didn't have anything worth countering, which honestly in that situation is probably a win for me, because most of my deck is creatures that are under 3 CMC, so I'm going to just generally aggregate more value from the Aluren than other players would, so the turn order was really helpful here to give me a little bit of protection, especially since I didn't have much interaction in my hand at that time. Anyway, outside of this play, the games that we played on this stream were very entertaining, I thought, so we're going to be editing down most of the games that we played on that night into the next few videos, so you'll be seeing a little bit of Dylan and Cam on our channel for the next week or so. If you want to see even more of them, be sure to check out their channel, Play to Win, where they release weekly CEDH gameplay, and it's honestly super entertaining to watch, so go check them out if you're looking for more content to fill your time while you're either in quarantine or just not able to do as much in general. That being said, that is all we have for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. My name is Joseph, this is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.